Greetings, everybody. Welcome to America's Retirement Academy. My name is Chaz Price, and I'm a certified financial planner. Glad that you're here today tuning in to our presentation entitled Investing in Precious Metals, such as gold, silver, and platinum. In today's presentation, I'm going to be detailing the topic of whether or not you should consider investing in gold and precious metals, such as uh, you know what we have, what we've been talking about here, and uh, we're going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of doing so. And but before we get started, we want to go over a quick disclaimer. Um, and the disclaimer is that the advisory services are offered by the Retirement Guys Formula, and the uh, America's Retirement Headquarters, Peak Brokerage Services and uh, the Retirement Guys are all separate entities. And for more information on this topic, as well as our company in general, you can visit our website at www.americasretirementheadquarters.com. Okay, so uh, I like to always start my presentations in the immortal words of uh, Simon Sinek, if you've ever read his book, Start With Why. And that's where I'll typically start with my presentations. And today we're gonna do the same. You know, once upon a time, our fiat currency, the good old uh, dollar, the, the greenback, whatever you call it, was based on um, and heavily relied upon on some of these physical reserves, such as gold. And today, this is not the case, not in the United States, nor in most countries. In fact, at one point in our history, it was actually deemed illegal to own gold. And so... Um, you know, but, but today, gold and precious metals are a tactic that a lot of financial advisors, uh, fin financially educated individuals for a very long time, have been utilizing during times of economic instability. So we're going to talk about that. But to begin with, when we're looking at performance, gold and precious metals in the last 20 years has actually been uh, one of the best performing asset classes that you could own as an investor. And on the screen here, you can see that it um, is right behind REITs as the number one performer. And then you've got gold. And then uh, we're looking at the, the stock market and the more traditional investment assets that you're familiar with. So, you know, from a long term perspective, uh, gold and precious metals is actually a really good performer. Now, on the next slide, you're going to see really one of the with the impetus for us doing this presentation now is because of what you're seeing on the screen here. So this is very simply just a chart of the uh, market's performance in 2022 year to date. And as you probably are aware, if you're tuning in to this presentation, you know that the market has been very volatile. And gold has actually held up. In fact, it's uh, compared to the Dow Jones Industrial Average the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, that blue line at the top there is the spot price of gold and silver, the symbol for the index XAU. It's there. All four of those indices are on the chart, and you can see that gold has actually been is one of the best performers year to date. So, you know, kind of in, in a timely uh, topic, um, gold has actually been one of the best performers and why we're you know, one of the reasons why we're having this conversation today. So glad you're here to tune in. Now, if we go to the next slide, we're going to look at, again, another reason for why precious metals. And it should also come as no surprise that, um, you know, we're facing quite a bit of spending. The Federal Reserve continues to spend and increase their balance sheet. And uh, gold has traditionally been uh, one of the investment classes that when the dollar falls, you know, similar to just basic economic principles, when there's more of something, it's usually and typically worth less. And so that also goes for the dollar. And so historically, gold has been a smart choice when the U.S. dollar has fallen in price. And so we can see that on the chart that as the dollar and as the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has almost experienced what you might say is a parabolic increase in spending, um, you can see here uh, that you know it's just a tremendous amount of, of volume of money that's flooded the economy. So the fact that gold has traditionally held up well in times like this when there's a flood of dollars and the dollar weakens is another reason why uh, you might want to consider investing in, in gold and precious metals. Okay, um, So we're going to go to the next 
slide here. And on this slide, we're looking at, you know, inflationary pressures. And so what you can see is as the dollar continues to uh, weaken, which is the red line there, um, gold and precious metals tends to hold up, almost act as an inverse, uh, acting in an inverse relationship. So gold and spot prices continue to go up as, um, you know, the dollar weakens kind of just to further illustrate the point that, you know, in times of weakness, hard assets tend to hold up a little bit better. On the next slide, we're looking at, now in this, in this uh, example, again, we're gonna look at inflation a little bit more, but for any asset class to have any true economic value, it first has to be able to outpace inflation and then create further value. So here on this chart of gold and inflation, we see that uh, how this classic store of value, gold, uh, has performed over the last 10 years relative to inflation. And as you can see from the chart, while inflation has been relatively tame in the last you know, 20 years based on the CPI, the Consumer Pricing Index, which is just essentially a basket of goods. Um, the data for the better part of the decade has been relatively um, stable. We haven't had much inflation, but now inflation is starting to set in. We've, we've actually seen uh, inflation at some of the highest numbers that it's been in the last 40 years, uh, touching over 5%. And so gold has historically been able to outpace it. So like I said, this is definitely something that we, we've been monitoring and that we will continue to monitor for our clients is the rising cost of goods and services. Um, as I said, it's been getting, it's you know, definitely increasing in the last um, you know, few years. So that's a trend that we're gonna monitor very closely. All right, and so on the next slide here, uh, we're just kind of you know, um, looking at all of the fundamentals that are in play when it comes to investing in gold and precious metals. So again, not only what's going on in the United States as far as the devaluation of the dollar, but we see this across the globe. Other countries are doing very similar uh, monetary easing where they're you know, essentially pumping dollars in or pumping their currency into the, the economy and deflating their, devaluing their, their currency. So we're seeing that across the globe inflation, and of course, geopolitics. Um, you would have to be under a rock to not know some of the conflicts going on around the globe, is particularly in Ukraine and, and Russia right now. And so, you know, that continues to have an impact on the stock market. And as we saw on a few slides ago, gold and other hard assets tend to, you know, rise in price when there's geopolitical tension simply because of that flock to safety. We see people moving to hard assets like real estate, gold, and silver, and platinum, along with, um, you know, other, along with other uh, supply and demand, um, you know, impacts going on right now, unemployment numbers, uh, lower GDP, high cost of, of goods and services, um, you know, energy prices are increasing, you know, there's just a lot of supply and demand factors that are going on right now. And so uh, that's a natural consequence of, I think, what's going on in the United States is printing too much money, inflationary pressures, spending, things like that. So these are all the fundamentals that are at work right now that are causing our investors to consider investing in uh, alternatives such as gold and precious metals. So we're going to go on to the next slide here. Now, uh, to give you a balanced uh, take on whether or not you should consider gold and precious metals, we want to look at the disadvantages as well. And one of the disadvantages and the main two disadvantages that I see of investing in physical gold and bullion and coins is the fact that there are no dividends. Gold and silver, precious metals do not pay any dividends. And so, you know, for investors that are retired and living on some of those dividends, Gold doesn't offer a whole lot of utility. You can't walk into the store likely and pay for your groceries with uh, gold coins, maybe. But unlike you know, some dividends and stocks and mutual, uh, some dividend paying mutual funds and ETFs and stocks, which do pay dividends that you know, regardless if the value of the mutual fund is up or down, 
uh, above or below what you paid for it, you should you know, tend to still get your dividend that you can live on. And similarly, like fixed income investments, bonds, cash, CDs, uh, gold and precious metals do not pay interest. So those are some that, you know, those are the main disadvantages of owning physical gold. So to kind of, you know, delve a little bit further, again, dividends, interest, uh, most stocks and bonds don't pay that. They're not income paying securities and, um, you know, you, you can't buy things typically with it. So just kind of further reiterating that point there. So um, one of the downsides also on the next slide here, you can go to the second one there, there's one more after that, yep. As a tangible asset, gold and precious metals, uh, tangible just meaning that you can hold on to it. One of the disadvantages that I see to owning physical bullion or gold uh, is that it's a physical asset. And so if you can hold on to it, that means you have to have it, you have to be in possession to actually own it. So it can be stolen. And in additionally to that, you know, you can't sell it very easily. It's, um, it's an illiquid investment, meaning that you have to find a reputable, you know, dealer that you trust going to give you a fair price for that, for, uh, for the amount, for the ounces of gold that you have. So it's, it can be stolen. It's a physical asset. You have to be in physical possession of it, which involves other costs. You know, uh, which kind of begs the question of where are you going to save it? Where are you going to store it? Is it going to be in your home? Is it going to be in a lockbox at the bank? And if so, are there additional costs associated with that? And, you know, really, if it's in a lockbox, I worked for a bank for almost 15 years. Um, we're closed on, you know, most Saturdays. And in the event that there is a, a significant, you know, run on the bank or something like that, you know, likely the bank's going to be closed. Are you going to be able to go in and access your gold? to get it back out of the vault. So there's some issues with it being a tangible asset, issues with storage, owning a physical asset can be stolen and it's illiquid. All right, so moving on to the next slide there, another disadvantage, and you know, you could also maybe consider this an advantage depending on where you're coming from and, and, and what you uh, wanna try to accomplish by owning physical gold, but there is no electronic record of it. There's no, um, record of the buy or the sell in many cases uh, once it's been purchased. So you don't have any record to show that you own it. Also, it doesn't fall under the protection of S SIPC or the Securities Investor Protection Corp. So if it is stolen, um, you're just, you're out that money. Whereas with SIPC, the uh, in Investors Protection Corporation, Securities Investors Protection Corporation, the insurance that you have, by having a brokerage account uh, due to the insolvency of the broker, you know, you have the ability to, you know, file a claim if, if something were to happen. It can't be easily pledged as loan collateral as well. So, you know, not very many banks are going to accept your, your gold coin collection as, um, uh, you know, down payment on a home for a, or a home loan as collateral. And there's no statements to really track the performance. So on a brokerage account, you'll get a statement on a quarterly basis. But owning gold, you know, you really have to do a lot of research or know how to track the spot price of gold in order to, to know how it's performed. So those are some of the downsides as well. Now going on further here, we've got uh, some, some ideas on how the retirement guys can help. So if you've made the decision that uh, investing in gold and precious metals is going to be a good decision and it fits into your portfolio as kind of that alternative sleeve, maybe five to 10% of your assets that, you know, you're willing to maybe be a little bit more speculative. Uh, there are some alternatives that in some, some ways that we can help you purchase and, and participate in the gold and precious metals trend that we may be seeing here due to the, the economic and the geopolitical events that are going on. Uh, but not have to go through some of the disadvantages associated with owning the physical bullion and owning physical coins and gold. So on the next slide, we have um, you know a couple different ways that we can purchase. So through mutual funds, uh, and actually let me jump back one slide there. Yeah, so the first option would be through mutual funds. So 
you know, owning a mutual fund can provide you an allocation to gold or silver or mining companies uh, or, or companies that bring other such metals to the market as platinum, palladium. And, you know, aside from professional fund management and mutual fund in the metals sector can kind of broaden your, your exposure to multiple precious metals instead of just owning one. So, you know, owning just gold or silver, you're going to be exposed to all the risks associated with owning gold and or silver. But owning a mutual fund can really diversify you uh, quite a bit and then, you know, lower your overall metal risk. Uh, there are a number of precious metal mutual funds available, you know, all with varying different types of holdings, allocation possibilities and risk profiles. So you definitely want to speak with your advisor about which one best fits your risk tolerance. Secondarily, and, and probably the easiest way to own uh, gold or to get exposure to, the, to gold and precious metals is by owning ETFs. And by far, uh, one of the largest ETFs or gold ETFs in terms of asset size actually owns gold bullion, which is stored in several secure vaults. And that's the underlining investment asset in that ETF. And, you know, as an ETF that's traded daily, uh, that, you know, the price will tend to move in line with the price of gold real time due to the fact that um, the underlining asset in that ETF is the actual gold bullion. In addition to that, you can also own the individual stocks and or futures, um, futures markets and futures on gold prices. Uh, you can trade in and out of those on a daily basis and, and also have access to those. All right, so the next slide here. Uh, other ways to potentially hedge against inflation. We've got a balanced portfolio. Uh, balanced portfolio just simply means, again, 50-50. You've got 50% of the money in stocks, 50% of the money in bonds, which tends to give you a more moderate approach to investments and, and tends to hold up a little bit better in times of volatility and inflation. Commodities uh, were also you know, an option that you can invest into. REITs or real estate investment trusts and government inflationary protected bonds. So those are options that you can invest in as um, as an investor, as a, as a savvy uh, individual interested in offsetting inflation. So if you're worried about, on the next slide here, we've got kind of a wrap up. So what do you do now? So if you're worried about the outlook of the economy and your portfolio, maybe it's a good time to talk with your advisor. Some of, the, some of you that are watching this presentation today are gonna be existing clients of mine and I would love to sit down and have a conversation with you. There are also other financial advisors at America's Retirement Headquarters that may utilize this video with their clients, and we would encourage you to have a conversation with your advisor to customize and develop an approach for you specifically that's going to allow you to you know, meet all of your goals and uh, address your risk tolerance as well. And so in closing, uh, that's the Gold and Precious Metals presentation today. Uh, my name is Chaz Price. If there's any questions, you can email us here. Our contact information is there on the screen. And uh, we appreciate you taking your time today to uh, tune into this presentation and look forward to seeing you again very soon. Have a great day.